How to deal with customer objections. Hello, happy Tuesday to you on this sunny, sunny month. It's turned, weather's turned wonderful in the UK for a, for a bit at least. Where I live, I live in the southeast corner. I believe other parts of the UK are not quite as good. I hope it's good for you in your part of the world. I am John Martin. This is the Marketing for Owners podcast, but you know that because it said it on the download thing, because you're on iTunes, are you? Are you on Stitcher? Are you on SoundCloud? I like all of you. If you are on any of those, please, please, please click the reviews and give a review. It will be lovely if you think it's worth five stars, but if it's not, I'd still love to hear what you think, because this is an evolving podcast. I may have... uh, I've recorded 430 odd, but I'm still learning and I want to uh, do what you want. So this comes about today from from a couple of people asking me about when they're in front of clients or talking to clients on the phone or wherever. And the client simply has the reasons why they don't want to buy customer objections. What do you do? What are the answers? How it's as if the way they're asking, it's as if there is a list of, oh, we'll just do this, do this, and, and that solves all of it. It's not as simple as that. This is all mind games and trickery. Now, first of all, remember that not every client is or potential client is, is in a position to buy now. They may be in a position to buy later. So there is only a certain amount of, of pressure. In fact, pressure is the wrong word. If you are using pressure, it's wrong. The client, in this is the 21st century, everything has changed. The power has, has shifted from the supplier to the buyer. Now the buyer is in control, so you cannot pressure. Gone are the days of, uh, in the UK we had double glazing salesmen, well, well they still operate, but double glazing salesmen who would stay in your house till midnight until you signed to get rid of them. And the only way they get you to sign is, is they say, well you've got 21 days to change your mind, don't worry, no commitment, and etc, etc. We don't do that. So people are not always in a position to buy, and sometimes the product is not suitable for them. But hopefully you have qualified them. Hopefully you are in front of the right type of potential client and and they are pre-qualified and they are the correct audience for you. So your main thing is, can they buy it now or later? So remember, if they want to buy it later, they still need to like you. So first of all, if someone brings up an objection, a particular objection, first step is to agree with them, to thank them, to say that is that is a great question, that is a great point, thank you for bringing that up. If, if you have a notebook, say if that's okay, do you mind, because uh, that is a very valid point, do you mind me making a note of that? So first of all, you have agreed with them, you are suddenly on their side, you are not opposite them, you are on their side because you're agreeing with them. And then you're going to bring in empathy. You are, uh, so ask them a little detail of, of why into that question and then side with them. So I understand, yes, I understand. I can remember when, I can remember this company. Always bring in examples always have examples to hand, whether it's of yourself, but make sure they are genuine. Don't make stuff up, okay? Now, now you've got them on your side. They like you. You've agreed with them. You haven't flat off said, oh, no, no, no. You've agreed with them. So they're your friend. The next one is to start to convert them to turn them around and the way we do that is by explaining first of all the value so forget about price this is not this is not about the price you have to discuss the value to the client so if they if they are if you're trying to sell them something they say well it's too expensive or it uh, so and so has one cheaper then you can say well well yes of course, of course, theirs is bound to be cheaper. However, there are probably, whatever you're supplying, you, you know, 193 su- uh, cu- suppliers in this country supplying the very same product. Only one of them is the cheapest, 
and everyone has customers. We are, we are never going to sell on price because that's a mugs game. Um, what car do you drive? And, and hopefully the person doesn't drive the cheapest car going. But you probably assume they're going to drive a, a middle car. Say, why didn't you buy a cheaper one? Exactly. It's not as simple as that. And then you enhance the value. So, um, so you, you give justification, but then you talk about the value. And you hopefully you've already done this. This is how to sell. You explain the value to them. You put everything in their, in their court, in their words, and you explain how this is good for them, not how it's good for you, how it's good for them. That's all they're interested in. One of the best ways you can do this if, to explain value is in some way, shape or form, explain how this is going to save them money and it's going to save them time. Because those are the two things that people want want more of or don't have enough of, time and money. And so if you can explain how that's going to work, and, and don't, in money, don't, don't tell them about what it's going to save them over the next 20 years. They aren't really thinking that far ahead, they're only thinking now. So find a quick win of how it's going to save them money now. Why, uh, so for instance with, with cars, why buy a Mercedes instead of um, a Ford? because of the reliability, um, the comfort, the, the status, etc. Get away from price, and, but put those things in the person's mind. If you want to know a way of putting them into the mind, uh, so if you want to turn a, a feature into a benefit, a feature is, is, is a feature of the product, a benefit being a benefit to the potential customer. At the end of the feature, so um, it just add this little phrase, so that means, and then you can explain. So, um, uh, the, this, uh, I don't know, the Mercedes has um, an ergonomic, ergonomic seat. So that means when you've driven a long journey, a 300 mile journey back from, uh, from or to see a client, and you're, you would normally be tired, you get off out of this car as if you've been sitting in an armchair at home watching TV. Do you see? Convert it into that way. Then you back this up with, once you start to enhance the value, then you start to drop in more case studies. People, if they are, have got objections, they just want proof that other people are buying this, that they're not an idiot, that they're not going to be silly, that they're not going to be the only one. They want to know that everyone else is buying it and everyone else is happy and why they bought it and how they're happy and how it helped them. Now I'm going to hope that you have proof that your product is a good product. Now of course if you've just invented it yesterday and this is customer number one, you'd probably be selling it in a different way. But let's assume you have clients, you have been in business for a while and you have happy repeat clients. You can tell them you don't have to give them names, you can explain uh, we have a, a, a customer who is so and so. I mean, in my fire protection business, we we supply we supply to Google, we supply to Buckingham Palace, uh, the BBC, ITV, Top Gear, you know, programs, um, all sorts. We supply to Downton Abbey, Downton Abbey, the show, the 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 production company for Downton Abbey used to buy our products. No, you won't see; they're not that old, um, but. We have people galore with names that people recognise, so we can say, and if people think, oh, if they're buying, then it must be okay. And of course we back it up with guarantees, but you shouldn't really need to talk about the guarantee. You should have mentioned that before, because that makes you sound like you can, you can overdo it on the guarantee at this point. You can make it sound like you, uh, well, don't worry if you get it wrong, it, it's all covered. You should have covered that earlier. This is where you agree with them. You thank them for their unique point of view. You agree with them that it's a valid point. But then you stress the value. And then you explain everyone else who thought the same and how they got over it and they put it to use and how it is improving their lives. And that's how generally you deal with customer objections. If you, if you ever go to a sales conference where you have some, a sales expert at the front 
and says, right, anyone, put up your hands and tell me all the reasons why people don't buy. And you think, oh, there's hundreds of reasons. But in actual fact, when it comes to it, there's about five. And no matter how many people can come up, he's writing them down, they all come under a, a, a few little categories. There's only about five reasons why people don't buy. And so you don't have to cover that many objections. You can practice. Practice makes perfect. You'll get more sales. OK, um, it's Tuesday, toolbox tip. And as you know, I'm in this series, I'm reminding you of great tools that are still great that I use every single day. And today is a free one. It is called Jing. Jing is from TechSmith who make Camtasia and Snagit. But Jing is to totally free. You can grab screenshots and you can make screencast videos for free. Brilliant. So just go into Google and just put download Jing, J-I-N-G. You'll find it, it will improve your life. Keep it on, on your screen. It's so clever. Just go see what it's about. I use it every single day. And, oh, by the way, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow's Experts interview series is Phil Pallon. Phil is brilliant. He's a branding guy. He is so funny and he is so nice. I've met him in real life. Genuinely great guy. He's gonna be the one doing our new branding. So listen to tomorrow. I'll be back on Thursday. Wasn't that great? I learned so much from my guests. It's wonderful. But to find out what you think, please hop on to iTunes and give the show a review and a rating. We'd love to hear what you think. And please mention the particular guest in the notes so that we know which one you're talking about in particular. Then, once you've done that, we've got a fantastic gift for you. Go to the website at marketingforowners.com slash free book. And you will find there's a little surprise waiting for you. And it doesn't matter where you live in the world. Go on, go over to marketingforowners.com slash free book and see what we got for you.